Okay, so good to have you here in the School of the Spirit. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really go after a lot of different things. Um, I want to just start off with just simply saying that somebody just moving their lips and going, ba 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 is not necessarily tongues at all. And somebody doing any other kind of thing with their, you know, syllables and whatever is not necessarily tongues. I see a lot of stuff go on. It's not tongues at all. The Holy Ghost has poured out his wonderful intercession of prayer, his wonderful intercession of praise, his wonderful intercession of language, and it always excels to something. And so um, I wish that I had the right to tell every one of you where you were right and where you were wrong. Uh, but unfortunately, many people haven't given us that right yet. And it's the first principle of understanding how to walk in the school of the Spirit. Because if you're going to walk in the school of the Spirit, you're going to have instructors in God. And your instructors are allowed to say, you're wrong, you're right. Now, what people want to do is they want to be right. And then I'm telling you that it's simply not going to work out for you in your relationship with God the Holy Ghost. Because He's right. And he wants to bring us, he's the only one who's right, everybody else is wrong. And he wants to bring us into all the fullness of the measure of the maturity of Jesus' ministry. He wants to bring us into all of the wonderful and beautiful dispositions that belong to his life and character. That's what the School of the Spirit's all about. See, the Holy Spirit's come to teach us everything. He's come to lead us, he's come to guide us, he's come to to uh, feel us. Um, we're, we're, I, I read our back up. I say we're to walk in the spirit, be led by the spirit. We're, we're to live by the spirit. We're to be filled with the spirit. We're to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. We're to have the Holy Spirit being expressed out of our life like rivers of, uh, 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 of living water, like I mean, there's just no other, there was just no word for it in the English language or in the human language. So the Lord Jesus said, you know, he'd come out of you like expressions of, of floods, just floods, rivers. And so let, let me tell you, in, in my um, time of being in the ministry, I've been in the ministry all my life in the sense that I, my, my, you know, parents were in the ministry. But personally, I've been... Uh, in ministry, teaching, pastoring, ministering for 35 years. And the biggest problem and, and the biggest frustration, the biggest challenge is trying to help people understand where what the things that they're doing that's keeping them from being sensitive to the Lord. See, the whole thing about it is just being sensitive, just being tender to the Holy Ghost. You're never going to be led by him. You're never going to be instructed by him. You're never going to be guided by him. You're never going to be taught by him. Not really. Not personally. You can get some things from the word of God and you can get some things from the, from the preacher. But reality of it is, is what you read from the word of God, let me tell you, will not be translated into practice until a personal relationship with the Holy Ghost has developed. People are just forgetful hearers. They just like living under the law. You try to live under, uh, under human discipline. How do you get what you read in the Bible translated into a practical everyday experience where you're walking around in the same disposition and attitude and demeanor that God Almighty has, where you're walking around in His loving kindness and tender mercies, where you're walking around in everything that pertains to His life and His godliness. Now, I, I just really need everybody to, to stay with me. I know you. if you have children here, I would prefer if you had your children with you. That would help me. Okay, parents, so if you could do that, I'm going to give you a few minutes. Go ahead and do that. Just call your children to your, unto yourself. And it's probably a good thing for you to do for the rest of their uh, uh, maturation time in your house. Because if you'll keep them right by you, um, then, you know, uh, hopefully they won't depart from you and from the things that you've taught them in God. It's very important. Never let, I'll never let my kids wander off. And um, I advise you not to let your children wander off either. 
Um, I really wanted to do a handout tonight, and um, unfortunately, we're having some printer problems downstairs. And, you know, I've said, I, I've tried so many different times to help people understand what prevents them from walking in the school of the Spirit, what prevents them from being taught by the Holy Ghost. And it's, and it's, and it's been very, very challenging. And what, what really is somewhat comforting to me, although it's not really comforting, is that most pastors that I know have the same problem. It's like, well, why is it that we're not making this connection with God's people where they can simply understand that they've got behaviors going on in their life that is literally keeping them from being able to interact with the Holy Ghost based upon a sensitivity. God still loves you. God still cares for you. He's the invitation still out to you. But you're doing things and practicing things that are making you insensitive. And I'm just going to start with general explanations of it, and then I'm going to go into details when, who knows, before this meeting's over, hey, look, here's some handouts just showed up. And, um, and so I'll just let Randy hand those out. But I'm going to give you some general things, okay? You have various different layers of relationships, Okay. And the close relationship, husband, wife, children, parents, are you with me? The things that are going on in those interactions can literally begin to make you insensitive to the Holy Ghost. I'm going to listen to me. They begin to make you insensitive to the Holy Ghost. If there's inappropriate relationship, and then you have beyond that other significant people, that their opinion about you, what they think about you, what they say to you, has another level of impact. <clears throat> now matter, imagine if... That impact is negative. Imagine if that impact is hurtful. If that in, in, impact um, causes uh, some form of, of wrongdoing with in your life. What's happening is these layers of relationship problems is actually shoving the Holy Ghost further and further and further away from you. Because attitudes, ways of thinking, offense... Hurt, unforgiveness, conflict, discouragement. All of those things make you insensitive to the Holy Ghost. You're in prison. You're in prison. Amen. I watch people who come in to church in a prison. By the end of the meeting, they liberated from the prison, beginning to be sensitive. Then I watch them go back to their problems. You listen to me. I watch you go, to bow. I watch you go back to your problems. See, you have to decide, I'm going to make serious changes and adjustments in my life. Otherwise, I'm going to continue to live as I have lived. Now, once again, think about it. Because what we've heard is so many times, it's just become white noise. We're called <clears throat> to live in the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit, to be continually filled with the Spirit. First of all, we're born of the Spirit. To be, able to, to be able to have all these things, to walk in the Spirit, to live by the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit, to be continually filled by the Spirit, to be continually baptized in the Holy Ghost so that the Holy Spirit can be expressed through us in such a way that all the fullness of God is being made manifest. Fundamental things like love. <laughs> and, and there's so many people insensitive to the Father's love. Why? Because they've been hurt by relationship love. They comp it's convoluted. It's complex by these, all these various different things that are going on around them. They're stuck. They're stuck thinking about the last problem, the last conflict, the last hurt, the last dissatisfaction, the last disappointment. You don't know it. In your mind, you're going, in your mind, you're thinking, oh, Lord Jesus, I love you. But you, it's not going deep. You can't. Feel it. You, you're not sensitive to him. You're not sensitive to his presence. You don't know how to yield to him because you're you're stuck. You got all these layers. How does how does that how's that stuff gonna get washed off of you? And and I, that's what that's what we're gonna help you with. That's what I'm here to help you with. And, and so that's why I gave you this bit of a handout tonight. And it's gonna be I'm gonna go over the handout. It's gonna be hard for me to get through the handout. But, uh, you know, the goal, I mean, these are powerful scriptures here. 
you know, if you look up these verses of scriptures like Ephesians 4, 13 and 15, and, and my goodness, the Lord is telling us that, uh, that, that we're able to mature into every dimension of the character and disposition of God's way to come into the fullness of the measure of the ministry of Christ Jesus, to grow up into Him in all things. Think about this. Are you with me? Verse 15. To grow up into Him in all things. But you know what? This isn't the Christian experience, and it's got to stop. It has to stop. We are not growing up into Him in all things. We're stuck. We're stuck. As we're trying to think about Him and, 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 and wanting to grow up, we're stuck. We got the remedy. Dear people, the Lord wants us to live by the Word. I think that I mean, people want to try to be insulted to me and said, oh, you know, all you, do is, all you do is speak the Word. All you do is, all you do is, all you do is talk Scripture. You're just like a robot. You just speak Scripture. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I, and I pray that... You know, and of course, most of the folks don't really know whether I'm speaking scripture or not. They just, you know, they just assume it because they're not, they're, not, they're not that versed. Right. Well, you, you and I, we have to recognize the Holy Ghost has come to, to immerse us into Christ Jesus. He's the word. If you're going to live by Jesus, you're going to live by the word. You're going to live in the word. It's, these things are going to be, you know, maybe you can get around to it. You're going to recognize the first thing in the morning, you get up and you begin to set a tone. I don't like it. I don't want it. I'm upset. I don't feel good. This ain't right. Why is this bad thing happen? And it just goes from one, it's a snowball. And the enemy takes advantage of it. The Lord's called you and me to deny ourselves, to live to do the will of the Father. And that, uh, by and large, is not going on. It's not going on. The good news is that God is long-suffering. The good news is that He loves us. Everybody's got all of the excuses. You know what an excuse is? It's admitting that you're wrong with an explanation. <laughs> You're with me, can I say, an excuse is the admission that you were wrong with an explanation. Are you listening to me? And there's too much of that going on. We've got all of these reasons why we can't obey God, all these reasons why we can't do what's right, and it's just not going to, it's just not going to hold water with the Lord. And so, you know, I'm, I'm giving you these, these powerful verses of Scripture like Colossians 1, 10, 2, 90. 219, increase with the increase of God. I mean, these are powerful verses of Scripture. I don't have time to read them right now, but I want you to take this handout. Don't lose this handout. Please don't lose this handout. I mean, this handout. Do you want to be in the school of the Spirit? Then you are going to commit with your life that you're going to do this. I, I watch people do these things. They want them flowing gifts of the Spirit. Nonsense. It's not the gifts of the Spirit. It's a wannabe gifts of the Spirit. It's not. It's a lot of it. I mean, what is that guy? Runs around deceiving people. They call him, uh, I can't, but he, huh? Yeah, that guy, Chris Angel. He does a better job of it. He does a far better job of it. He did the word of knowledge on anybody. Watch him. Watch him. I, I watched him one time. And I saw the demon power at work, and I don't commune with that. He does it by a demon power. I know it's all sleight of hand. People can figure it out, but it's demon power. And he's got all tricks and wires, and it's demon power in it. Okay? So he does sleight of hand. And I watch what happens. I watch where people are giving their attitudes, their disposition, more to the spirit of, uh, of darkness, and then they speak out of that realm. And they say, it's God. It's not God. It's not the Holy Ghost. I want to wipe this slate clean. I see a lot of stuff going on. That people are sitting going, blah, 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 blah. I say it's witchcraft. It ain't tongues. And if people would allow me to just say, stop it. I've gone up to people and I said, stop it. Don't do that. And then they leave the meeting. Because they don't really believe that there are folks around town in the kingdom of God who have the ability to discern spirits. They don't believe that there's instructors in the faith, pastors, guides, leaders that are indistinguishable in the gifting from what God the Holy Spirit is speaking. I'm still a human being with all of my faults and failings and, 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 and shortcomings and immaturity, but there is a gift.
that is something that is indistinguishable from the voice of God. And if you want to come into the school of the Spirit, you're going to have to get yourself to where, you know what, I'm going to come, I'm going to go back, I'm going to turn the clock back about 60, 70 years, and I'm going to become reverential to the ministry. I'm going to become reverential with respect to the things concerning the church. It's going to be a sacred place again. I don't need nobody's reverence. Okay? Are you with me? I don't need no I don't need anything from anybody. I don't in the sense that I need people to listen to what I got to say. I have an office that demands of me to declare the word of God. The reality of it is you need it. You need it. If you'll if you'll take what the Lord gave, he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. Well, come on, then let's see some saints perfected. <laughs> For, for the maturing, uh, for the building up of the body of Christ. Let's see the church, the body of Christ, get built up. Because I know what that looks like. I know what the church looks like. Anybody who reads the Bible knows what the church looks like. I don't know what the church looks like because I have some special set of experiences. I know what the church looks like because I can see Jesus. I can see what was going on in the Bible. I can see what was going on in Moses, in Elijah. I can see what was going on in David. I can see what was going on in Daniel. I know what the church is supposed to look like. It's all of that put together and then released in an unlimited, immeasurable realm. And we don't have that. We have pretend. We have pretend. We have a lot of pretend. And we have this thing that's constantly back and forth. And, and then because we were so anxious about now moving in faith, you know, God told us to do it, so we just need to go ahead and step out and do it. And so we're just going to go ahead and start giving people words of knowledge, and we're going to just go ahead and start prophesying. Watch out. Watch out. This is holy ground. This is sacred realm. Ain't no place for pretend. Huh? You know, I love looking at the school of the Spirit being as a foundation being started for new people's lives. I'm just looking, for example, in Samuel um, chapter 2, 1 Samuel chapter 2. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, we see, a, the, the, we see this scenario painted for us. We see that um, it's really Samuel chapter 3, 1 Samuel chapter 3, but we see there in 1 Samuel chapter 2, we see three people, in three, three groups of people in three it's, it's three different people, and I'm going to call them groups, in three different environments. We see Samuel, who was given over to continually minister before the Lord, to the Lord, representing a New Testament saint, representing a person in the church, representing a royal priesthood. Huh? And the scripture says three times there in chapter 2 and chapter 3, and he ministered before the Lord. We see him laying down in the temple. Right there before the candlestick, the revelation of God. Right there before the light of, his, of God's presence. We see Hophni and Phinehas laying down in sexual immorality. Which speaks of a whole lot of foul leadership that's existed since then. And we see Eli has laid down in his blindness, spiritual blindness and physical blindness in old age. Old age wasn't a glory to him, it was shame. Huh? The word of the Lord was precious in those days. Eli was in hearing the word of the Lord because he wasn't doing what God told him to do and living like God told him to live. Phineas and Hophni were not hearing the word of God, although they were saying that they had the word of the Lord and leading women astray with their falsehoods and fakery. But one little boy who was given over to lay down in the temple, to live in the temple, to minister before the presence of the Lord, he heard the voice of God. And when God speaks, he always speaks with the sound of your leadership. So he thought it was Eli. That's what he does. Because that's the way Pop is. See, he's very generous. He's willing to empower. He's willing to share of all that he has. If somebody's willing to walk with him and be used by him, he baptizes him in his glory. He empowers them and says, right or wrong, I'm standing with this, my man. 
He did it over and again. I can show you over and over and again. This is my man. I'm standing with him. So long as my anointing is upon him, this is my man. I'm standing with him. If people could begin to take the things of God and call them sacred, beginning with your own life. The Lord Jesus purchased you with his blood. He made you a new creation. I mean, I'm so blessed that Daniel's leading the prayer meeting. Please come to the prayer meeting because I want you to learn how to pray the scripture. Listen to me pray. You'll hear me pray in the word of God. I pray the scripture. Lord taught me long ago. Pray the scripture. Prayer is important. Prayer took me from just being surface with God to places of depth, deep places of feeling his presence and, 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 and having the, 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 the depths of my spirit crying out to him. I used to spend a long time in prayer just to have a few minutes in depth, deep prayer to where that gets developed, you know, and now you just immediately go there. But you just learn how to pray the scriptures. You learn how to spend time ministering before the presence of the Lord so that you can really get it. He wants to touch you first thing in the morning so that you don't start saying, I, the, I don't like it. The toast is burned. I don't like it. The, look at the, the floor is dirty. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. You don't like it. And the Lord says, murmuring and complaining is the last thing on the ticket that has anything to do with them whatsoever. And so we're going to have, we're going to, have to understand if we're going to walk with the Holy Spirit, we're going to have to understand what he's doing. If we're going to be led by the Holy Spirit, we're going to have to first understand what it is he's doing. Listen to me. If we are going to live by the Holy Spirit, then we're going to have to understand what he's doing. And we're going to have to make a contrast here. And so in your handout... You know, the first thing, I, I really already touched on this. Jesus said, and this is an optional, this is the school of the Spirit. He says to everybody in Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29, he says, come and learn of me. You want to get started in the school of the Spirit? Are you with me? Hello? Are you with me? But the Holy Spirit, you, I'm going to tell you right now, he's as unknown, his ways are un, unknown, his movings are as unknown, his activities are as unknown to you as the wind that blows. You have no more control or authority over his moving than you have over the wind. He's come to move upon us, not us move upon him. We don't tell him what to do. He tells us what to do. He's not going to be instamatic whatever we decide. This notion and idea that we got it all, we can do it all whenever we want to do it is nonsense. They all spake with other tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance and everything else happens the same way. I have no love but by the Holy Spirit. I have no joy but by Him, no peace. Not real love, not real joy, not real peace, you see. Not real long-suffering, not real kindness, not real goodness, not real truth. Only He brings it. He's the life-giving power. People, if you could just understand, Paul said, be strong in the strength of the Lord, power of His might, so you can stand against the tricks of the devil. People don't get it. People just don't get it. Don't matter how many times you say it. Because listen, if you're not strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might, you won't stand against the tricks of the devil. So now, we're not strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. We're not able to stand against the tricks of the devil. So what do we do? We create new doctrines for ourselves. We bypass scripture and we explain now our experience. No, 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 don't do that. We, we, we try to go in some other way. We say, oh, you know what? It's not working going through the door. It's taking too long. Let's climb up some other way. There's another way into this realm. There's not. There's no other way in this realm. There's a lot of nonsense going on, and it's got to stop. Huh? I, I, come on, dear people. I want, you to, I, want you to, I want you to understand. I want you just to understand that the Lord Jesus Christ is calling you to a place called sacred. He wants you to come live there. I want to just give you a, a few things concerning some contrast here in disposition and the thought realm. Okay? I want you to understand that doubt, unbelief, sorrow, sadness, despair, discouragement, fear, anxiety, stress, envy, Hatred, anger, offense, hurt, and the list goes on that many of you have probably participated with today and do on a daily basis. First, at best, starts as a self-realm. At best, at best, a self-realm. And this myself, I'm offended because of what somebody said. But will soon become hooked up with a demonic realm. And um, there's different types of there's different types of uh, of sorrow. 
different expressions of sorrow. Many people practice and give place to what's called melancholy, and it's okay to be melancholy. No, it's, it's, it's a depressed state. Of, it's a spiritual power at work against you. Just depression, melancholy, sorrow, sadness, disappointment. People begin to, people get, begin to really develop a powerful move of depression in their life. Can you imagine sowing into a powerful move of depression? Huh? And you start off with disappointment. I don't let disappointment. I recognize that's wrong. I'm not, no. But a lot of people are disappointed because they don't like what Father's manifest will was. They wanted something different. And it didn't turn out that way. You know what? I believe everything that Father wants for me, I'm going to have and nothing can stop me so long as I'm with him. And just know, people always make excuses. The devil did this. Oh, the devil, I'm under attack. Man, when are you going to get translated over in heaven? When are you going to be under his glory? Because, you know, that's a wrong kind of thinking. That's not the faith realm. That, by definition, is a doubt realm. And a doubt realm is as powerful as a faith realm, just works on the other side of the spectrum. Okay, and you're going to have to grab a hold of. You're going to have to begin to recognize what's going on up here in the noggin. Okay, what's happening up here in the thinking realm? What are, what's going on? I start off with disappointment. Oh man, I got, you got up. You looked at your Facebook, or you looked at your email, or you looked at your mail. Oh, it didn't come. Oh, disappointment. What well, the Lord said, you should be giving thanks and give thanks in all things. You better, get, you better get a hold of the spiritual principles. This is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus in all things you give thanks. Because it's going to stop a progression that ultimately, unless you stand up, repent of your wrongdoing, don't say, oh God, what's wrong with me? Why, why is Pastor Martin happy and I'm so sad? You repent of your wrongdoing. Father, forgive me for being unthankful, disappointed, getting all wrapped up in my own self-interest and not looking to you and thanking you that all things work together for those who love you and, the, and, and those who are called by your name. You know, you've got to repent. Act like it isn't a problem. Stop it. You'll never mature. You'll never go on. You're not going to be in the school of the Spirit. By definition, to be in the school of the Spirit means that you accept that the Holy Spirit has come to teach you everything. <laughs> I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of truth. He's going to teach you everything. Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. Uh, Jesus said, I got many things to say to you, but you can't get it. And boy, well, look at what they were already getting. Go raise the dead. They could get go raise the dead, but there, he has more things he wants to say that they can't get. But how be it when the Holy Ghost comes, you're going to get it. You will see it. It will, be at, it will produce an expeditious growth rate. So many people are just stuck, still desiring sin and iniquity, things that are clearly evil, things that everybody recognizes as destructive. I don't care who they are. Ultimately, everybody's got enough wisdom to recognize that all sin ultimately has a consequence of evil because it's destructive. But yet they haven't tasted of this glory realm. And so because they're so empty on the inside, so cut off from the Holy Ghost while they're calling on Jesus. Yeah. Holy, Holy Ghost has come to reveal Jesus to us, to reveal Jesus through us, to immerse us into Christ Jesus, uh, to show us Jesus, and that's the Word. Grab a hold of the Word of God. Don't let the Word of God depart out of your mouth. If you're going to be able to walk in the anointing and assignment that God has given you, you're going to have to be strong and very courageous. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know. I'm going to stand here and prophesy I've been doing it for 35 years. I know where I'm, I know where I'm going and I know what I'm going to get. I'm not going to give up. I've had everybody and all, oh, all, so many different people and so many different ideas. I've had come and go. I mean, I've had seen, have seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people in the meeting. Hundred, thousands of people have come through the church over 35 years that were never going to leave. That didn't happen quick enough for them. I, I'm, I'm looking at a heavenly vision, a, a, a divine plan that Father himself has for this region. I'm not going to stop. You know what? And I know, therefore, I'm not going to be disappointed. And I'm encouraging you. Quit stopping. Get out of your ditch. Come on, man. This is a good life. Whether you get anything else but this that, or not, it's the best life. Whether you just get to walk every day in the same love that he's loved us with, you have the best life that's ever been possible. If you just could have, uh, give yourself over to living in the joy unspeakable and full of glory, you'll want for nothing. Uh, you'll be so filled up. Saint, come along with this temptation. You go, I'm too full, man. 
I don't need that. I'm, 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 I'm happy enough. I feel, I feel, I, I could have feel any better. So I'm, I'm not interested. And people are, people are thirsty for the world because they drank, but the well got stopped up right afterwards. And then they come around, person like me, and the well gets unstopped. And then they get a real swell spring, spring in for a little while, and then they go back. They don't know how the well got stopped up. I don't know how the well got stopped up. I know how the well got stopped up. Let me tell you how the well got stopped up. Stopped up. You continue to do the same things you've been doing. You've not been willing to change. You're not willing to be making adjustments. You're holding on to your own interest. You're holding on to your own self, your own way. You're not willing to recognize you have to walk a different way. L let me just, can I simplify this thing for you? Real simple. Here's what the Lord wants you to do. He wants you to be continually so filled up with the Holy Ghost that out of your life is flowing inexhaustible expressions of His divine glory. That's it. Just do that. Don't worry about anything else. Just do that and everything else will be just perfect. Everything. Rather than, no, we want to go do the deeds. We want to go do the activities. We're just so busy about so many things. Stop it. It's not what the Papa has for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Blessed is His name. Now, that's the disposition and thought, just some highlights. I'm on guard. I'm on guard. Are you on guard? You're supposed to be. You're supposed to keep yourself. The wicked one cannot touch you. Huh? You're supposed to be a watchman. Hallelujah. You're supposed to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You're supposed to say, no, I'm not allowing myself. I'm not going to commune with devils. And come under the authority of Satan. I'd rather walk with the Holy Ghost and be ministered to by angels. <laughs> it's another realm. You're not going to walk with the Holy Ghost and be ministered to by angels in your disappointment. I'm going to have discouragement, offense, mouth, slander. That's Satan's name. You cannot slander another person and not be 100% by name hooked up with Satan. A demon spirit. And then when people wonder why it is they can't walk in the Holy Ghost, why it is they don't have the blessings and the fruits of the Spirit. They're just ornery, cantankerous, hard to be around, irritable, can't get happy people. <laughs> and that is terrible. How are you listening to me? Huh? You know, I, 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 you know, I first opened up my eyes this morning and my wife was up, already up, Beat me out of the bed, you know, and and I and I I just waited. I said, "Hey, morning, honey, come here." And she's got this big, huge smile. She's just always happy. And I said, "Listen, please, just let me tell you how much I appreciate you being so happy all the time. You're amazing, You're just amazing. The joy of the Lord that you allow to surge through your life, baby, is just so amazing. Thank you. I guarantee you, people are going to thank you for being happy. It is. It's a ministry. People want to minister the word. I take it." To their husband or to their wife. They, they can't hear nothing you're saying, man. Your actions are speaking way, is drowning out everything you're saying. You know what I'm saying, right? How about just, you know, walking in love? I've got a tough job because I'm supposed to rebuke and reprove. It's a tough job. Nobody likes to be told that they're doing it wrong. And the people that tell you you're doing it wrong, you know what? You're going to get away from them. You're going to find a reason to get away from them as soon as you possibly can. Watch out, because the Holy Ghost is going to tell you you're doing wrong. He's going to tell you you're doing wrong. Huh? He's going to reprove. He's going to rebuke. He's going to correct with all perseverance. He's going to let up. And I, I meant before him, say, do it again, Pops. Correct me. Tell me what I need to do. Here I am. Search me. Try me. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Let the righteous smite me and be held unto me. I mean, come on, right? I want to be in the school of the Spirit. And um, slander, Satan. You know, uh, the accuser. That's another one of his things. You know, recognize what Satan is doing. I prefer recognize what God's doing, but I'm mean, not tell people over again. Recognize what God's doing, do it with him. 
And it's like, there's no change. And they're looking at me like, what are you saying? Of course, it's so many, I'm amazed at how many people can walk in such an aggravated attitude with every kind of complaining, wrongdoing, murmuring attitude that you can think of and say that, and look at you and tell, and say, what? I'm walking in the spirit. Do all of these things that are completely satanic, demonic, and they blind and deceived. And then they're going to be the chief one saying, well, you blind and you deceive. Huh? Well, let's just read the word of God. Let's just see what Satan is doing. And recognize if you do what he's doing, you're, you're participating with him. Let's look at what the Holy Ghost is doing. And if you're doing what he's doing, then you're participating with him. God wants you to have a witness one way or the other. Are you with me? So let's just, this isn't difficult stuff. This isn't nuclear physics. This isn't multivariable equations. This is stuff that goes on. Very simple. Everybody can identify it with great accuracy in someone else. <laughs> Which is 99% uh, of our problem. Because it just doesn't stand out with such repulsive. I'm going to stop there. Okay, slander. I'm going to stop on my adjectives. Slander. I didn't put accusation in there. Malice. Strife. Arguing. Any kind, any kind of strife. I don't argue. I do not, I do not argue. I, I was in a situation about three or four years ago with a, a man of God, and, and I was in a situation, people were having problems, and, and uh, he, after the thing was over, he said, for now on, if Mark doesn't get up and defend himself, I'm going to get up and defend him. Honest, I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to say nothing. Until the, if the anointing comes upon me, then I'll say what he gives me to say. But I, I've learned how not to move in self. I've learned I've become sensitive to what is the self realm and what is the movings of the Holy Ghost. I started off in this process, process saying, Lord, I want to be like Ezekiel. I, I, Lord, I, I know that I don't know how to speak. I don't have discernment. I, I mean, at least... You know, Solomon showed us, I don't know how to come in, go out. I don't know how to discern. Let me be able to discern good from evil because I don't have a clue. I'm, I, I don't know what to speak. Let me be like Ezekiel. Let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth until your anointing comes upon me so I can speak by you. Well, there's a consecration of our lives. So I'm going to start speaking the word. I'm going to start living by the word. I'm going, to, I'm going to let the word, Christ Jesus, be manifested in my life, in my tongue, in my conversation, in my what's ever coming out of your mouth, what's in your heart. I hope the word's coming out of your mouth because the word's supposed to be in your heart. But if the word's not coming out of your mouth, something else is in your heart. And you need to face up. Are you listening to me? Just It's so simple to get right with God. It is so easy to be right with God. I mean, Satan's big lie is if you fail or fall short or, or you're not doing it right, then you get overwhelmed and condemned, somehow separated from the Lord's presence and he's not listening to you. That's all nonsense. If you come running to Jesus and you say, Lord, help me, forgive me, it immediately, instantly, man, you right in the big middle of the throne room. Yet people constantly are defending themselves and preserving themselves and protecting themselves to try what to... To, for what purpose and gain, you must distill it down to an influence called the pride of life. Unwilling to be wrong. Are you listening to me? Yeah. These are the fundamentals to walking in the school of spirit. There is no getting in a hurry here. There's just walking this thing out. People want wisdom for last minute wisdom. Oh no, I've got to make a decision. Oh God, give me wisdom. It didn't happen that way. <laughs> Wisdom is developed because you give attendance to his word. That's where wisdom comes from. It's a lifestyle. It's the way that you live. Then you're going to have wisdom. Huh? Up until then, go, go get yourself some counsel. Counsel. The Holy Ghost has anointed me. I praise the Lord. He's filled me with the spirit and he's given to me the spirit of wisdom. And he's given me a spirit of understanding. He's given me the spirit of counsel. And of might or strength or valor. He's given me the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. This is mine. Available to me. Well, will I walk in it? No, not if I do this other stuff. Not if I walk in foolishness. Not if I walk in strife. Strife and envy? What did, what did, what did the Lord say? Every evil thing and every evil work. I'm not, I'm not doing it. 
I'm not going to participate. It's just the same as going and committing adultery with your body. It's the same as any other sin or iniquity. You're giving yourself over to demon spirits. And what's happening is now there is a greater power to run interference against you hooking up with what God wants you to do and hooking up with what God wants to show you and reveal to you. What's the only power to change that is to repent. Repent means you say, I'm not doing it anymore, and I'm going to walk in a different way. Many people say they repent. You've not repented. You said, I'm sorry, because the pastor caught you. Huh? And because he's like, veins popping out of his neck. See, I will have revival because I'm not willing to live without it. I will have a great awakening because I'm not living, willing, living, willing to live without it. I will have a move of the power of God that looks like early church because I'm not willing to live without it. And you can tell. You can tell. You can tell. And that's obnoxious and offensive to most people because many people are willing to live without these things. You have to decide what you're willing to live with and what you're willing to live without. But when you want these things, when you're earnest about them, they're going to stand out to you like flashing like flashing bl- bright, you know, lights, blinding bright lights. I'm not having that stuff in my life. It's going to run hindrance against me. And the goodness of God, however, leads you to repentance. Those of you who have not really repented, you're just going to go back and you're going to get in the same arguments. You're going to get in the same strife. You're going to live in the same disposition, you know, unhappy, argumentative, complaining, suspicious. At accusing, manipulative, huh? If you really loved me. And it's just demonic. If you were the son of God, you know, kind of thing. If you're the son of God. It's just demonic. It's manip- manip- manipulative. If you're the son, then turn it stones into bread. Manipulation is always challenging your identity, huh? To get you to do something that a demon wants you to do. And speaks through the voice of uh, of, of mouth of men. That's the school of the wrong spirit. Okay? We want to be in the school of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, we don't want to learn how to do witchcraft. Oh, God! Please! Shut them down over there at the abiding place! It's witchcraft. God never does that. Shut them down over there at that church. Oh, God, shut them down. Talking to the wrong God, so little G. Now, I can feel those things. I can feel those things. Okay? I, I, I have discernment to feel them. I've been trained to feel that. And I just send it right back from whence it came. To go work its unholy confusion in the place from which it came. Okay, that's it. That's what the Lord told me to do with it. Send it back where it came from. Send it back. There's times the Lord just say, bind it. Just bind it. Well, it's, it's prayer. No, it's not prayer. It's cursings. It's cursings. You better watch out. You don't know how many. People, can you imagine actually getting down on your knees and justifying cursing as prayer? Huh? Because you don't like something. You don't believe something. Ooh, you better watch out. You turn to Father, Father. You see this situation, I do not understand it. It's a burden to me. It's concerning to me. Shine your light upon this situation. You judge the situation. If I'm wrong, oh God, correct me. If this other situation is wrong, Father, for the sake of the innocent, for the sake of people around them, Lord, work your work in the midst of this, oh God, that your name may be glorified. That's letting Papa do it. Now you say, you telling something and it's going to happen. Now you're in league with Satan. Cursing. I've heard so many subtle cursings of people that are supposed to love each other and be friends and even in sitting in the counseling room of husband and wife, I've heard husband and wife cursing each other in subtle ways going, my goodness, is there no growth at all? No maturity, no ability to discern. And you know what it all is from? Holding so tightly onto self. Defending, it's the defensiveness. It's the posture of pride. See, pride is the most subtle of all Satan's craft. Remember, people, I want you to just understand. I'm trying to get at something. I'm trying to get at how sin, sa- Satan hinders us from walking in the school of the Spirit, being taught every good thing, 
everything that pertains to life and godliness, every good and perfect gift, everything that concerns the divine nature, everything that concerns his beauty, his ways of splendor. Huh? Look, you, you know, people, I'm telling you right now, you labor today to make some money that will maybe get you through the month. But you have the opportunity to labor today for a wage that will last forever. Because what you do in the Spirit, what you do in sowing after the things of the Spirit, what you do in giving yourself to that which Father has commanded us, a disposition in life that He's come to lead us in, you live on that forever. There's a wage there. See, there's a wage. There's a profit. God ain't going to be mocked. God's not going to be mocked. Okay? He's not going to be mocked. You sow the flesh, you sow the flesh, reap corruption. He's not going to be mocked. Okay? People are constantly reaping disaster. We want you get, we want to get you sensitive to the Holy Ghost. There was a time in my life ago, Lord, because I didn't really understand. I said, Lord, is, are some people born to be really sensitive to you? And other people are just not. They're not born to be sensitive. They're just hard and callous. They can't be sensitive. They, something's wrong with them. They're tweaked spiritually. Huh? Because I had some men of God that I respect greatly who said that was true. They just tweak spiritually. And they had the various different reasons. But I'm, I just, I could never really buy into that. And then the Lord said, no, 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 no. Everybody has equal opportunity. The grace of God has appeared to all men, Amen. teaching us to deny worldliness, ungodliness, you know, demonic influence, live righteously and godly and soberly in this present world. He's where we all have a chance. And then the Lord began to help me understand where those things are that people are given to place to. They're not calling it sin. They're not calling it influence of, the, of a demon power. They're holding on to their self. They don't never, they've never, people have never learned how to base in a very simple way deny themselves. Because they think, of, well, to deny myself and take up my cross and follow Jesus means I need to go to a foreign country. Huh? Take up my cross and follow Jesus means I need to go on a 40-day fast. No, it means you need to stop arguing. <laughs> it means you need to stop complaining and stop fussing. Huh? It means you need to start yielding to the Holy Ghost and let God fill you with His love until you feel in, instead of you allowing yourself to be filled with your own aggravation. Huh? <laughs> right? He's listening to you. Because Satan's going to come play in that. He's, that's his arena. He, he's going to come play on that playground. Huh? Huh? Yeah. And it's going to look like he's fetching your stick, but he's going to come after your juggler here. He's going to be biting you in the face before too long. Are you listening to me? Because he's worse than that demon-looking bulldog. Are, are, is everybody with me? Can I, just be, can I speak with all plainness of speech? Sadness. Sadness. There's nothing wrong with sadness. You can try to take those sadness away from me. <laughs> Sorrow and sadness flee away. The redeemed of the Lord return come with singing. In other words, when you're born of the Spirit, you now you got to sing, you got a song and a dance. Hallelujah. I mean, you got to skip and a shout. Huh? Sorrow and sadness flood away. And once again, how does it come? Some disappointment, disagreement offense. Where does it start? Where does it start with you? It's like people talk about a migraine headache. Certain things set it off, right? People talk about other various different uh, pains and diseases in the body that are, uh, that are uh, um, periodic. Do not sustain periodic. Something sets it off. Something precipitates it. What precipitates your aggravation? What precipitates your depression? What precipitates your unthankfulness? What precipitates your murmuring? What precipitates offense? The greatest demon power at work. I've watched it. Literally watched it. I watched a person many times in context of a meeting take a spirit of offense. Here is in the midst of the presence of God. Power, glory of God's there. And a person in that midst of the glory of God Something happens that they didn't like. Immediately, they take offense and there's a whole transition of demeanor. And that spirit of offense ultimately puts them in prison. And, 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 more than likely, they'll never repent. Now, you deal with what you, you, deal what you can get away with before the throne of God, having not repented for it. The goodness of God is this. 
If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But we live in an apostate age right now where people are saying you're going to sin more or less every day, where, where, that we're all sinners and don't worry about it. That deceitfulness, that's another layer. That's another level now. That's consciously doing unholy acts, okay? To which, once again, your heart's hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. You do not have a sensitive, tender heart of flesh towards the Lord. It's now a calloused heart. And worse than that, if you're now justifying it and you're living in it, you're going to lie and not repent of it. Your heart's going to be hard. You're going to do acts. You're going to do transgressions. You're going to speak evil of people. Look, it was said of Jesus, he did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. If he would have spoken guile, if he would have spoken any kind of deceit, if he would have spoken anything out of that was a, a, a treachery or of self-defense or of revenge, he would have sinned. Therefore, that's sin if you do it. And you cannot sin without the participation of a demon spirit. He that sin is of the devil. That's what that verse of scripture means. It's the, along with other verse of scripture, it, you have to participate with a demon spirit. You will ultimately at some level participate with a de demon spirit in sin. It's their realm. It's their realm. They are, they are masters of their domain. Satan is so crafty, he was able to deceive the angels who beheld the face of God and ministered before God, the mighty cherubs and mighty angels of God that stood before the presence of God for eons of years. And what can he do to you and me? You and I got it. The name of the Lord is, is like a tower. The righteous run in and they're safe. I'm going to run to Jesus. I'm going to let the word be a lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. I'm going to be born of an incorruptible seed of the word. I'm going to let the word, the seed of his word, remain in me. I'm going to let his word be continually in my mouth. Uh, right? Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. I tell you, there's a famine for the word of God today in the United States of America and the Western world. There's a famine. The word of the Lord is scarce in these days. The word of familiar spirits from the sons of Baal are, are everywhere, even as they were in the day of Samuel. Today, right now. And I don't have some kind of an Elijah complex. Which I've been accused of many times. I asked the Lord, Lord, do I have an Elijah complex? If I did, it would actually be a very good complex. To have. I'd rather have an Elijah complex than a Balaam complex. Son of Baal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there are many sons of Baal. They say to the priests of the Lord, and the prophets of the Lord, that uh, by fruits they deny him. Come on now, listen to me. I'm getting after this thing. Huh? Now, the most important thing is that we take heed unto our own self. We make sure that we, you know what, I'm, I, I, I have a great fear of the Lord. I have a great fear of the Lord. As it says in, in, in Isaiah, um, chapter 11, verse 3, the, the fear of the Lord is as an aroma. There's a smell. It's a Holy Ghost conviction. It's a smell. It's a smell of frankincense. It's the most beautiful smell that there is. So. Holy Ghost conviction. I have great fear of the Lord. These things are sacred. What belongs to the spirit of holiness is sacred. I'm not going to disrespect his things. Yeah, go ahead and just turn that off. <laughs> Here, let me get real personal. Gossip, tail bearing. Once again, dear people, these are, this is the same, in the same department of slander and accusation. God hates the gossip. He don't hate you, but he hates the spirit. And thus, he will not merge with that. He will not commune with that. He will not be around it. He's made a way for you to get rid of it. Just confess it, repent, say, I'm not having that in my life. And the Holy Spirit would be there to help you do that. And then the communion be restored, fellowship would be restored. 
Are you telling me he doesn't love me? Oh, he loves the whole world. I'm talking about relationship right now. I'm talking about you being sensitive to his presence because we've watched as many people have been in his presence and they're not sensitive to his presence. They're not sensitive to his presence. They do not know how to respond out of deep love because there's all of these layers of problems stacked on top of it. They made so many things important, beginning with that significant other right there by your husband and wife, children, parents, those people who are, are important to you, leaders, peers, extended family members, bosses, friends. Watch out. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it proceeds the issues of life. The Lord's telling us how to walk properly. We need to, we're going to have to come into the school and learn because he'll teach you. I'm going, I'm going on. Um, I, I got, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that I, that I got, I did get through sadness, despair, discouragement, fear, anxiety. I got through all those, right? Yeah. I did. I just want to reemphasize those. <laughs> well, I don't know what's wrong with me. I know what's wrong with you. You're communing with an evil spirit. Well, what am I supposed to do? Repent. What am I supposed to do? Ask your helper to help you. Well, I did. Nothing happened. Well, then you are a unique variant and a proof that God is unfaithful and doesn't keep his promises. And, of course, we know that's not true. So we're going to have to get, we're going to have to sort you out. You're going to have to sort yourself out. Huh? Huh? You're going to have to quit. You're going to have to quit going with your word. Start going with his word. Now. Cursing, lying, false witness, sower of discord. God says seven things that are abomination to me. Yea, six things abomination to me. Yea, seven my, does my soul hate. The seventh being one who sows discord among the brethren. It's sedition. Hey, you know, you better watch out for him. Oh, you know what? You better watch out for her. I heard a story. Oh, but you're all justified because, you know, you're protecting the innocent. Huh? Upholding the cause of the righteous. No, you lying. You've participated with a demon spirit. Huh? Jesus didn't go and say, didn't tell the guy, say, listen, let me tell you about those Pharisees. Forget about those Pharisees. Forget about them. He said, no, go get the offering that Moses told you in the law and go offer it. The leper that got cleansed, go offer it as a testimony to them. Huh? We're honoring leadership. We're honoring the people of God. Huh? The anointing's sacred, even if it's saw. Even if it's saw. Better be careful. And, you know, the good news is that, first of all, you hear these things, whether you're here right now, watching on the web or via YouTube, you hear these things, it allows you to, re first of all, recognize, you know what, I can't do this, I'm not going to allow those things in my life, those are not acceptable, it's sin, it's just as bad as sin as anything else, there's no reason for me to be doing it. And second of all, it allows you to, do, to repent. If you've been involved, now you, now, you know, don't justify yourself. Don't say, well, I had a special cause and right and reason. Forget about it. Repent. Mm -hmm. Repent. Confess your sins. He'll wash you, cleanse you. You'll be right with God and be well on your way to heaven. Amen. Amen. And you know you're well on the way to heaven when you're living in heaven. Amen. Amen. You know you're walking in the Spirit when you have the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So. Uh, I want to just look at this contract, cr contrast real quick right down here at the bottom, okay? Right down there at the bottom. At the bottom, I've got HS, that's Holy Spirit, and I've got ES, that's Evil Spirit. Okay? Now, I'm going to assume that you do not by nature have an evil spirit, and so if you're going to participate with things that belong to uh, iniquity and sin, that you are participating with an evil spirit. Okay? Now, you were born in sin with an evil spirit, and you needed to get a new spirit. Okay? When you get a new spirit, all that is evil is on the outside of you. It's not on the inside of you. It's not, you gotta, we don't have to go down into some deep root of, of hidden iniquity and get you some kind of inner healing. Because that's an offense against the blood of Jesus Christ and the message of the new creation. And as far as I'm concerned, people who believe in the need for inner healing do not believe in a new creation. They do not have the faith that they get a new heart and a new spirit. I'm, I'm just going to be real strong about it because I believe with all my heart you prove to me from the New Testament. 
You're supposed to have some kind of inner healing going on after being made a new creation. And I'll repent. I'll, I'll get on the web and I'll repent publicly. I'll get up in the pulpit and I'll say, I'm so, so sorry. I was mistaken. I will. But I believe in a new creation. I believe in a new heart, a new spirit. I believe that you're born again. The old creation is dead. It's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. Now for me to live is Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. My new spirit's now hooked up with the Holy Spirit. I'm made one with His Spirit. He that is joined in the Lord is one Spirit. Think about that. One Spirit. I'm going to go with that. But I've got to recognize that the powers of darkness are continually going out with their tricks, trying to deceive. And the only way <clears throat> that I'm going to be successful against them is to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. 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 And that isn't even necessarily being baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's just having all the power and strength that Father himself has. But either way, it's fine with me because I believe that everybody should be baptized in the Holy Ghost. I, didn't believe, I don't believe it was God's will to leave anybody not baptized in the Holy Ghost. But what happened now is we've gotten so, uh, so hardened in our hearts and so involved in religious activities that now people have an initial experience of, of that baptismal ministry. The initial experience means tongues, and then they just stop. And they don't go on. They don't excel. They don't mature. Man, when you hook up with the Holy Ghost, when I go to praying in the Holy Ghost, it's to hook up with divine love. When I go to praying in the Holy Ghost, it excels to joy. When I go praying in the Holy Ghost, it excels to prophecy. When I go praying in the Holy Ghost, it excels to discernment, insight, no one feeling the closeness and the connectivity that I have with God the Holy Ghost. It isn't just an act, a meaningless, you know, bunch of, 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 of syllables that, that, that are, are strung together to prove that I have had some kind of spiritual experience. Huh? Because the, 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 you know, it's like the Buddhists do that. They got little beads that they remember to say the syllable with. And that's as dead as and as lifeless as any charismatic doing blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Check yourself now. Check yourself. Please. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean in any way or harsh. I'm just like, I'm just zealous for the Lord. I'm zealous for his house. I love the Holy Spirit. I, these are sacred things to me. I, am, I will not live without the glorious church being made manifest. I will not. The Papa put that in my heart. And that's a, a zeal he gave me. Somebody's got a problem with it. They got a problem with him, not me. Because that which I'm pursuing is very clearly defined in the word of God is that which we are to pursue. And I just can't help it. That I can't help it that he's filled me with a divine grace that won't have it any other way. And I pray that you get hit with the same grace. <laughs> That Jesus' name might be glorified and his manifest presence might be revealed in the midst of his church. Because the way we do church, by and large, isn't what the Bible says. Even us, Biden Place are here. I'm not, I'm not excluding the church, Biden Place. Because people scattered with their own opinions. You have, to come on, you have to come under the mantle and the leadership of the Holy Ghost, every person, individual. Individual, especially within the core of that church. And I labor for that. I'm a, we're, I'm a, we're going to get it. We're going to have it. Because Papa's going to work the miracle because he's not going to, you know, he, it's what he wants. And when he's got a people who want it too and aren't going to have it any other way, he's going to make sure it comes to pass. Amen. Amen. We're all going to be blessed by it. And, and, and nations will be touched by it. And, and a generation will be changed by and affect other generations in the future just as it did in the past. Amen. Huh? Amen. Papa Seymour said, don't come walking out of here talking about tongues. Walk out of here talking about Jesus, don't you realize, how, don't you have any understanding that the Holy Ghost is supposed to be in charge of his church? He's supposed to be the leader and not man? That was, that was a little over 100 years ago. Nothing's changed. We still live in terrible days of the grace of God. I mean, awesome, mighty, you know what I'm saying when I say terrible. Holy Spirit, love. That's what Holy Spirit's doing. Evil Spirit, hate. And there's no, I'm, no, like, I, you know, I feel kind of indifferent. That's hate. If it can't get into the category of love, the kind of love that Jesus showed us, it's hate. Because God don't have like. He don't have gray areas, fuzzy areas. Are you listening to me? Huh? So what happens? So what happens? Somebody offends me, you know. 
they, they say something bad about me. They don't like me. I know they don't like me. I wave at them every time I wave at them. <laughs> Snarl. What do I do? What do I do? Take offense? Because they're going to get into hate. I'm going to dislike them. I'm going to I'm say, no, I'm going to say, Holy Spirit, fill me with your love for that person. Fill me with your love. That's all I need. He'll fill me with his love. Hallelujah. And then I'll let the river flow and it washes away all the bad attitudes. That's, the, that's one nice thing about a river. I tell you, it, it, it comes with a gusher, my goodness. It's not like a fire hose. Fire hose do a pretty good job cleaning things up. Especially if, you, especially if you're standing within 10 feet of that thing. Yeah. Rivers do a far better job. Joy. Joy is what the other guy's doing. Evil spirit, sorrow. I'm not doing sorrow. I'm in the school of the spirit. God, the Holy Ghost, is doing peace. Here's what evil spirits do. Strife, opposite of peace. Confusion, it's opposite of peace. These are all biblical opposites. These are not dictionary opposites. These are biblical opposites, okay? Discord, opposite of peace. Separation, opposite of peace. Oh, I just don't like them anymore. You know how many people told me they're never going to leave this church? And they hate me. They speak evil against me. And they, they write with God. You can't do that. Even if I were Saul, you can't do that. You can't do that. It's by birch. And, and, and I can't do that to anyone else. You can't do that to anyone else. That's not peace. The, the, anything that brings separation relationship, God's a covenant keeping God. Those people, if they make heaven, they're going to live in the shack behind my mansion. <laughs> and they're going to do my garden work for me every day. You watch. You watch. I'm being a little bit facetious, but I'm not too far off. That's right. I can see what the community, I see how God structures community. Oh, yeah, that's the way you feel about it. You, 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 you'll be next door to them. In fact, any time you come up to worship, you have to come with him. <laughs> this, is way, this is the way he is. He's just, this is the way he is. He demands it. God demands it. God demands unshaking, unbrokable relationship. Look at how he treats you and me. And look at all the offenses. I can look at all the offenses that I have done against him and how he's maintained his cause and his love toward me. And he demands it of me. And if I don't give it, I'm in trouble. I'm wrong. That's what he says. I'm going to bless you to, to the point you bless. I'm going to give mercy to you to the point you give mercy. He said, you can speak. I give you so much faith that you'll say to the mountain, be me, whatever you say, it'll come to pass. But while you're standing there asking and you remember you got something in your heart, you better go get that thing right if there's unforgiveness because I'm not listening. And anything you say is irrelevant and it ain't going to happen. Huh? So if I'm speaking and it ain't coming to pass, I'm going to have to go through the checklist. I'm going to tell you something else. Are you ready for this? Yeah. I'm going to put the big heavy on you. If I even begin to get a little sick. Now, my body's attacked with sickness just like anyone else's. But I break the thing off in the name of Jesus. Now, if I go after it and I break it off in the name of Jesus, but yet it keeps coming. Now, I'm talking about people that have developed faith in living in divine health. Okay? I'm talking about those people. And I'm not talking about people having developed faith to live in divine health because you're just being run over top of everything comes into town. Are you listening to me? Yes. And you better watch out because you're being run over top of every other thing comes into town in the realms of influences in your thought and else and elsewise. Are you, are you see, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. But the bottom line of it is, if, you know, because I, I've, I've developed the faith, God's developed within me the faith to live in divine health. If I pray and the thing doesn't go, and it still comes at me. You know what I immediately do? I get down on my face before the Lord and I go through the checklist. I said, Lord, where I've done, what have I done? Show me. I don't go into some kind of condemnation, self-evaluation, witch hunt in my own life. I lay myself before the Lord and I let Father speak. I let him speak. Just let him talk to me. See, I don't like, you see, you see sometimes you tell me, I don't like how harsh you were. Huh? The, the Lord told me, I, I say, you smote the rock. And then they, and I just say, okay, Father, forgive me. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I get real low. And, and, I, and I say, please forgive me. And he, he said, I forgive you. Don't do that anymore. <laughs> and then the thing is broken. I don't go, you don't go make things up. But reality of it is, if you haven't been sensitive before the Lord, 
and allowed a personal relationship develop, you're going to make everything up, man. You can come up with some crazy conclusion. Now you're in a worse situation than you were before you even asked. You asked and you answered. <laughs> you have to learn how to, that's why prayer life is so important. You know one of the most wonderful things I love about prayer? It brings me into a place of such clarity and submission where I begin to hear his voice. It's always a dialogue. And it, did, and it doesn't really necessarily start that way. And don't feel bad if, hey, man, I've been praying. I ain't heard nothing back. Just stay with it. Yeah. Stay worshiping, praying, praising him. Because you're going to feel, you're, there's going to be a dialogue if it's nothing more than feeling his peace. That's a dialogue. It's him talking back as him saying, yes, it's peace. And that's the way he first ministers to us. Almost as, that's not silent. That's not a silent voice. That's profound, man. To feel his joy, to feel his peace, fills up. But see, but if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to do this love, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do what God told me to do. I'm going to obey the principles of the Spirit. I'm going to go walk in the school of the Spirit. He said, pray in the Holy Ghost. Build yourself up in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost so that you keep yourself in the love of God. That's what I'm going to excel to. I'm going to be sensitive there. I'm going to be filled up there. I'm not going to get myself so imprisoned so far behind, so overwhelmed that I don't even know how to touch heaven. And too many of God's people do that. I usually don't say, in the name of Jesus, I bind every unholy evil thing in Jesus' name for myself. I don't need to do that. I do it for people who've been over, God's people who've been overrun by the powers of darkness and they do not know how to rise up with their own will and break the thing off. And so praise God for ministers, huh? Praise God for spiritual ministry. Amen? Amen? But if you don't submit and obey, you ain't get none of it. You know, it doesn't matter. You have to hook up. You, have, you honestly, you'll find somebody to hook up with. Has more authority in God than you do. You want that. Because Satan's constantly trying to bash people around. He's purposefully set his heart to destroy you in hell. It's true. And his torment don't start later. It's already started. Huh? Let the peace of God rule you, Paul said. Let the peace of God rule you. That's what he said. Let the peace of God rule your heart and mind. He said, and the peace of God will rule your heart and mind, in fact. If you're willing to walk in these spiritual laws, if you're willing to pay attention to the Holy Ghost, I'm in the school of the Spirit. Where are you at? Can you see the Holy Ghost? Are you living your own life? Are you in your own pursuits? Are you doing your own thing? Are you waking up in the morning and are you acknowledging that your leader, just like Jesus came 2,000 years ago and appointed 12 uh, 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 disciples and also called apostles, has come to you personally and given you an opportunity to walk with him, to be taught by him, to be led by be instructed and to be developed by him? Do you recognize the value of it or is it oh hum? Listen to me, people, because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Satan is a master at his craft. And religion is no respecter of saint. And the word of God causes our senses to be exercised so that we may discern good and evil. But that's it. That's the use of the word. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, I'll, Tim be here, Tim Hall be here. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a master in the Word of God. God's blessed him. He just spent so much time in the Word. And he had we know you will get talking. He'll, you know, it won't be long in the midst of the conversation. You say, my goodness, I've got to go study. I've got to get back to studying the Word. I mean, because we just provoke each other there. I mean, I'm gonna, the Word is, of God is something that you want to you wanna lay hold of, you want to understand, you want to meditate on. on. you feeling bad, you're feeling sorrowful, you're feeling confused. Get yourself in the Word of God. And don't just get yourself in the Word of God so that you feel a little bit better now. Now you're back to the thing that made you so confused and upset and overwhelmed anyways. Stay in the Word. Stay. Don't forget where you drank of the water of life, where the refreshing touch of heaven came upon you. Stay Stay there. Amen. 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 Hum, hum, see, peace is lasting, so is separation, the opposite. Did you notice that? Humility is what the Holy Ghost is doing. The Holy Ghost is doing humility. 
Guess what? Guess what? The e evil spirits are doing. And, and, and um, don't forget. Don't forget. It, they are the prince and the power of the atmosphere. Everywhere you go. You know, Ruthiana said to me, she said, Dad, why is it so many people just slip right over into the satanic so evil, or so easily, so, so, slip right on over into the depths of sin so easily? And yet it seems that the things of God come so hard. I said, well, baby, it's like this. Everywhere you go, all of the propaganda of Satan saturates the airwaves, <coughs> the media, the television, the radio stations. It's the purpose and the cause of men. It's the, ri it's the river of man mm -hmm. right now. Imagine if instead it was saturated with the glory of heaven and all the television programs and all the radio programs and all the business pursuits and all the billboards and all the conversation and all the shops were all about the things of the beauty and the glory of God and the kingdom of God and all that he's done for us and all his goodness. You just slip right on over to that realm. However, <laughs> there is a place in which you and I are translated from the Power from the authority of Satan into the king of the into the kingdom of the beloved son, or the kingdom of the dear son, as uh, King James said it, Colossians 1 3, 13. You should make the choice. Are you going to be continually filled with the Spirit? Are you going to walk around baptized in the Holy Ghost? Are you going to recognize who you are and what your purposes are? Or are you going to have an earthly vision, earthly purpose, self interest, doing your own thing? It'll be taken out. The opposite of humility is pride. Humility is being moldable first and foremost to the Holy Ghost, not how you interact with people around you. It's how you interact with the Holy Ghost first. All these things is not how you interact with everybody else first. It's how you interact with God first because it's there that you receive the supply to be able to interact with people around you with that same demeanor and character and disposition of God. Because you get it from heaven first. Meekness. What is the opposite of meekness? Defensiveness. You listen to me? Defensive. That's why a lamb is considered meek. It's defenseless. That's why uh, Moses was considered the meekest man that ever lived because his, you know, he's like walking in glory and power and his face shining with the glory of heaven. And Miriam and Aaron, brother and sister, takes up a just cause against him, they think. Said, look, you know what? We also prophets. Why, can't, why does Moses get to do all the talking? When is our turn? What's going on around here? This is controlling. First person to say his pastor was controlling was Satan. First person to ever blame his problems upon his leadership was Satan. First person to ever lead an exit out of a, exodus out of a church, Satan. See, you know, I see the intercessions of Satan over and over again. He still does the same trick. Huh? He's a one-trick pony. One trick's all that he can do. Huh? Are you listening to me? Uh, you can see him saying the same thing over and again. Forgiveness. What's the opposite of forgiveness? Offense. Carrying an offense. Which clearly turns in to no time into bitterness. And you know somebody's got unforgiveness because they... Here's how, you know, can I tell you how people got, how you know people got unforgiveness? Are you ready? They talk bad about people. They have unforgiveness. They have guile. They've got an offense. They're always a gossip. They always feel that everybody else doesn't like them as well. That's unforgiveness in the heart, stronghold. Are you right with God with that? No, you're not. By many verses of scripture, I can prove it to you. What is it? Does people want to be that way? No, stronghold. 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 When you recognize it, then you run to the you run to the throne of grace. You lay home, ho, hold on the, as it were horns of the altar. Say, I, Father, there's unforgiveness in my spirit. There's unforgiveness that's, that's running, hinder, hin, interference, and hindering your love flowing out of me. Hindering your forgiveness, your mercy, because where mercy comes from, love, forgiveness comes from mercy. Merciful. What's the opposite of merciful? Vengeful. Guile. Threatening words. When he was threatened, he threatened not again. When he was reviled, he threatened not. Okay? Why? Because he's full of mercy. Amen. That's the life of God. That's what the Holy Ghost brings. 
That's the abundant life. I'm talking about the abundant life right here. I'm talking about the life of the Spirit here. I'm not talking about tongues and charismatic activities in a religious world. I'm talking about the real McCoy, Holy Ghost. Amen. The real thing, the Holy Ghost, Spirit of life, God's life. Good life. Unlimited life, everlasting life, life that cannot fade away. I sowed into my life that I'm living on. I'm sowed into my wage. I got, I got wages today in the kingdom of God. Did you get wages today in the kingdom of God? Yeah. Did you get wages today yeah. in the kingdom of God? Yeah. More important than the wages we earn. Yeah. Hallelujah. For, our, for what we wear and what we will eat. I'm almost done. I've gone longer than I wanted to go. My wife said, basically, honey, you probably won't keep it to an hour. But... <laughs> What? Kindness. What's wrong? What's the opposite of kindness? I just, it'd be a wonderful revival. Great move of God if the people in the church would just start being kind. Kind and tender hearted, affectionate one towards another. That's what the Holy Ghost does. You want to come into school of spirit? Then learn how to be kind and tender. I mean, I used to just walk by people like they didn't exist until I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and I got baptized in the Holy Ghost and rivers started flowing out of me and I started taking care of and being mindful of people around me. Huh? Hallelujah. We're interested. Amen. And then more, the more you mature in the things of the Spirit, the more interested, the more affectionate, the more kind-hearted, tender-hearted you become towards others. What's the opposite of kindness? Just being rude. Huh? <laughs> and, that, and I'm telling you, it, it used to, uh, listen to me. If you see the Holy Ghost, he, he, He's the most inviting, most beautiful, most wonderful person to look at. I've not seen him, but I want to see him. I, could, I, could, I, I know by his demeanor. I know what his demeanor looks like by his disposition. Does that make sense? Yes. And you know what your demeanor, you know what your disposition is by your demeanor. Huh? And you can be saying, I'm very happy. <laughs> really, I'm very, very happy. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I've got joy and speakable full of glory. <laughs> But no one's going to believe it. They're just going to basically say, you know, he's as crazy as I thought he was. <laughs> Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. If there's anything that you need to give yourself to, if there's any proof and evidence that you're filled with the Spirit, that you're doing what God's called you to do, to be continually filled with the Spirit so that the utterances of God, the flowing forth of His presence comes out of you, not just a trickle, not just a spring, but as rivers. It's thanksgiving. If there's anything that matters to Father, it's thanksgiving and praise. If there's anything that defines what we were created for, it's thanksgiving yeah. and praise. And look at what He said concerning those who murmured and complained. Huh? He said, though the, he said, though the work was finished from the foundation of the world, I repent. It's not going to go down that way. You're cut off. That's what he said. That's what Pop said. And I'm going to take notice of that. You know what? I'm not going to go. I don't want Father ever feeling that way about me. I'm going to be thankful. I'm going to be filled with the Spirit, speaking to myself in psalms and hymns of the Spirit, the songs, singing, making melody in my heart, always giving thanks unto God by Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you just do that, if you just do that, you, you will engage in the school of the Spirit that will keep you from most of the stuff that has been ruining you, spoiling you, stopping you, holding you back, keeping you from the good stuff. Father's given us the life of Jesus. Listen to me. Father's given us the life of Jesus. He didn't give us the life of Elijah. He didn't give us the life of uh, Gideon. He, 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 didn't give us, he didn't give us the life of Jonathan. He didn't give us the life of Nathan. He gave us the life of Jesus. Oh, come on, man. Let's just do it. Let's just do this life. Let's say, I want this life. This life is more important to me than anything else. And now the Holy Spirit has come to strengthen me with all power by His might so that I can do these things. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's not that good. It's just so full of joy. Unspeakable, full of glory. We love you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command the blessing of God upon you so that you might be able to see and understand these things, 
that they are true, that you might have the eyes of your understanding opened up so that you might be able to see what God's done for you and who you are to Him. I pray that you have the spirit of wisdom and revelation from this day forward. You'll understand and know how to recognize the Holy Ghost, to be sensitive to Him, and understand that that starts each day, every situation in your life, by the acts of obedience to simply say, I do not, I'm not going to do the wrong thing. I want to do the right thing. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for empowering me to be able to do that. So now in Jesus' name, be strengthened <laughs> according to the riches and right out of the abundant riches of Christ Jesus. I command you, be yes. strengthened. Amen. Hallelujah. In other words, have the mighty might of God empowered with the valor of his own power in your inner being by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, in the name of Jesus, Masatada. Now, there's no one going to hold on to the past now. Now, in the name of Jesus, I break it now in Jesus' name. No one's holding on to the past. No! No one's going to be defeated. No, sir. No! No! I'm speaking to you. Spirit, somebody said, well, you have to yell. Yes. Some of you spirits, hard of hearing. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, I let you go. I release you right now from the past and from the sins of the past by the authority of the living God so that now in the name of Jesus Christ you can go on in a relationship with Christ Jesus walking in the Holy Ghost knowing that you are beloved of Him, beloved to Him as much as Christ Jesus is beloved to Him. Now, you go free, you walk around happy all the days of your life. Amen. 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 Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And remember, dear people, if you want more love in your life, participate with love. And you, how hard is that? Start hugging people. Distill it down, right down to the very basics and action, and watch what happens. And the more you give yourself to the divine love, the less lust will be able to work in your life. It's true. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Well, we're done. Praise God. Amen.